Hey, what's up everybody? Prophetic here. Um, listen, I'm doing this quick video because um, after coming back from my gnome challenge, I kind of was intrigued about um, you know the workflow of a given in person using Linux. Um, and because you can customize your desktop in so many different ways, um, coupled with the fact that much of the world of work that we live in is such, is so digital, um, we're looking at this screen for hours and hours a day, um, you can really go in any direction with this. So I'm just, I don't know why, but I'm just fascinated with um, the psychology behind workflows and productivity um, and I the thinking behind that. And so uh, because, you know, GNU slash Linux is what it is, um, it's almost like a never ending, you know, journey of, of evolving your workflow. And so some of this is uh, kind of like a throwback to my old favorites that I love about using desktops and um, uh, my tried and true um, things that I go to, but then also the evolution of using a distribution and, and the layouts and, um, you know, growing with it. So I figured I'd start with, um, with this. I'm using KDE Neon. And uh, if you may notice that this might be a throwback to GNOME 2. Um, days where on the bottom left you see my workspaces I have five instead of four and I'll explain a little bit more about that and the bottom right I have my you know show my desktop um, top left I have my launcher and then I have my icons here um, that really is my task windows and then top right my icons uh, our notification section so uh, I guess I'll start with um, the top left here so launcher let's talk about the launcher um for me uh at first i was a i was always a big fan of the launcher having a dashboard setting like unity because there was again um there was some things about unity that i really enjoyed really liked um and gnome 2 all gnome 3 actually did this too um where it would go having your mouse on the top left screen would have this hovering effect and 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 like pop out effect of a dashboard that i felt was super modern it felt, it felt like you're using a a desktop of the future and i really appreciated that so for many many years i actually used that um fu uh, functionality um in whatever desktop desktop i was using um and then um after coming to kde and you know just again growing with different distribu distributions i kind of settled back to a min more minimalistic uh, approach so i just had a simple panel launcher but coming back from my gnome days um or my gnome challenge uh, i kind of saw the benefit of having a full blown background dashboard that, that pops up um because and here's the reason why uh, again going back to this idea of like the world of work that we live in a digital workflow um, I, my pet theory is that 80% of your time, your mouse is really hovering towards the center of the screen and, and not going too far in any direction. It's about, and that's, if you had to put like a diagram or hot, uh, hot map, uh, or heat map of like how you're, how much you use your mouse, it's probably going to be most of the time in the middle of the screen. So with that logic, when you press the super key or, um, you, you what, what, get, what pops up are, your most recent applications and look at that wouldn't you know your mouse is close to the applications you usually use um, so uh, for me going back to a dashboard thanks to my gnome challenge um, kind of like brought me back to this format and I'm going to probably keep it for a while um, and I thought that was really powerful so um, instead of like going to the top left which I could make that into an application launcher um, I decided just to you know keep it a super key and then my mouse is already there um, that kind of thing um, from there instead of having my windows um, my task switcher or my windows um, uh, I forget what the term is actually let's let's just see I forgot what the drawing a blank here okay your task manager um, is only icons only um, is because one it's I just feel like it's a little more modern touch to have the icons only um, kind of what, what, our, what we do with our smartphones their icons really and um, you know I already know what these things are what they do and uh, it keeps it less cluttered on the top bar here 
Uh, the reason why that's important to me is because um, I'm going to have this task manager actually covers the span of all my desktops. So that's going to be important to me um, when it comes to my digital workflow, because even if I were to get lost on all the things I have going on, um, you know, I'm going to be able to, um, you know, go exactly where I need to go with this task manager here. Um, I don't really go into the top right corner. It is what it is. Notification um, area, time, clock, whatever. Um, my bottom left here, I designated as my workspaces. And I don't know if you guys have a rhyme or reason, but I actually was pleasantly surprised when I forgot which YouTuber um, had their workspace set up in such a way. And it might not have even been a Linux user. It might have been a Mac user where they set up their desktops in such a way where they had like three desktops the center being their main station where they're doing whatever they're working on. Um, the left being for email and the right, uh, the far right being uh, like a task manager and calendar area. And so I thought that was like, um, I was I was pleasantly surprised because I wasn't alone in my crazy logic of my digital workflow. Um, and I just kind of like now I'm testing that to go even more so where I have five and I'll show you why. So my immediate left workspace is my core document. Um, I have a core document. Um, I won't get into it here, but basically it's kind of like my true north document um, where I have my goals, um, my mission and statement, my, my vision statement, um, the reasons why the goals are important to me, um, and also my monthly objectives because I have my goal and I break it down in months. Uh, as objectives I got to hit to, as I reach my goal. So kind of like I have like a ladder of sorts of each rung of the ladder gets me closer to my goal. And so I hit one goal already, um, getting back into higher ed with a full-time job working at UPenn, which I'm happy about. Um, but now I got to, now, now that I got that done, it's like I'm falling off a little bit in my other goals and I got to really get back to it. So I want a place where I can have my goals just always up, always up, static, not going anywhere. I even might use the application um, settings where it's forced there. I don't know if you guys know Plasma, you can actually do some really cool things with Windows management application, window management, where you can like tweak it in such a way where you can like have it fixed point static, not going anywhere, pin it almost, so it's not going anywhere. So that's pretty cool. So I might do something like that. Um, on number two, um, it's where I have my email. Uh, so my email windows might be here. I might have one or just two tabs uh, open. Um, I don't have notifications on because I want to break focus, but if I do want to email someone quickly and it's under the two minute rule, which is, I don't know if you know David Allen and his book, Getting Things Done, very powerful thing, uh, concept. But if you can do something in under two minutes and it comes to mind, you should just do it. Break away with whatever you're doing and just do it. Um, the next tab is workspace. So if I'm working on an Excel document, if I'm working, on, basically that's for focused work, heavy work, deep thought work. If I'm writing, that's the only thing that should be open. You know, that's what I'm working on now. Um, and I should just be on that right there. Um, and if I break away from something, I can always just pick up and go back to it without really changing any windows, just stays right there. Um, the next one is uh, my task managers. Um, I use Asana, and um, I, what's great about Asana is that you can like whatever tags, whatever things you put in, you can do like customized searches. And if I have a tag of like hashtag to watch, I have a special search that says, hey, things to watch. And it pulls from all the different areas of things I wanna watch with uh, my family, friends, things for my business, things for whatever. It kind of like it combs it all. Um, same thing with people to email, things to read. Um, I'm kind of like in and out of this system. I'm kind of coming back to it, um, but I just like having this, uh, this, this having it open all the time. Now here's the crazy part. I don't know about you guys, but I wear a lot of hats. I'm involved with my church. I have a biz. I have a, still have a side business. Um, I volunteer, and those are different those are different hats and so i want to i want to be able and this goes back to the digital workflow thing i want to be able to when something comes to mind to be able to capture it without losing it as you guys know things fall, fall through the cracks and that's life i get it 
but I kind of want to live a life where if I commit to something, I'm going to do it and I'm, it's going to get done. And I want to increase the odds of that happening. So if something comes to mind and someone says, hey, can you do this for me? And I agreed. I want to just drop it in my to-do list manager. And because my to-do list manager is all over the place, there's one client of mine who um, is using Todoist, um, I got to be able to dump it without clicking too much. If you, if you, I saw some, some, some reports about click fatigue, where if you have to click too much, you're less likely to actually put it wherever you're going to put things, um, that email, that document, whatever it is, you're going to put it off. And so I'm trying to minimize click fatigue, decision fatigue, which are real things. And, um, I want to just have all my to-do list and managers open on this, um, workspace, um, and just not have to think about it. And uh, then last but not least, my favorite area um, where I get to talk to you guys um, is Telegram, Hangouts, um, even IRC stuff. This is my last workspace where it's going to have all my chat stuff. And that's where I'm going to have all my fun right here. Um, so this is, uh, and I, at first what I wanted to have um, is pretty much have all my apps kind of like take like uh, tabulated here in columns because it's IRC because they're chat based apps they actually do well with this type of uh, breakdown actually I'm, I'm kind of just I don't know if I want to open up on my stuff but um, so think of slack right here think of IRC right here think of hangouts right here um, and that's kind of like what I wanted to do. Um, but the thing is, because I use a dock with my laptop and then I take my laptop out and go somewhere else, I couldn't, I couldn't make it, I couldn't make it that way because it's going to remember one window size over another. And then I already see that it's all over the place. Like for example, telegram, I think telegram opened up like right over here and I couldn't really see anything um, because just again with a different window size, the monitor sizes I was just like it's not worth all the tinkering you know so I just have it I'll probably have it like on maximize all of them and then I do one of these and uh, you know uh, if I have it set up where if I go to the top left corner of my I have that hover effect where it brings up the expose view almost um, of all my windows that are in that workspace. So I might just do that. And again, that's a, th that's a pulling from GNOME and what they do. Um, so, you know, um, that's pretty much the breakdown. Um, that was one last thing I'll say about that is that because there's so many different windows and so many different applications um, that I had to have all these things on auto start and all these things go to their respective workspace. Um, now again, if this was like my tower and this wasn't going anywhere, I would totally perfect the windows placement and size, but because I'm popping this thing in and out of the dock, I can't do that. Um, also one other thing that was kind of annoying that I have to, and this is, I guess, an app based thing, um, for to do list managers or even for Gmail accounts, like sometimes if you want to have a standalone like for example, my calendar, I have my personal calendar, which is tied into all my calendars, my work, my church, all those things that are pulled into my personal calendar. Um, the thing is, uh, if I have so many different Gmail accounts, if I sign into one, it automatically signs me into another account, uh, you know, and just the account management of my Gmail accounts and my Asana, which is the to-do list project manager system that I have, um, it just gets hairy managing all those things because if you log into one and you're signed into one, when you open up another window, it automatically signs you in another. And so it gets kind of tricky. So what I did was pretty much I, I, I downloaded browsers that I think Dolphin does this. No, not Dolphin, I'm sorry, uh, Opera, um, Chrome, and um, I think uh, Epiphany and the GNOME web browser they allow you to make a window, a website page into an app uh, or seem like a web app. Um, throw back to, you know, Peppermint OS and their Ice Mint days. 
um, and using site specific browsers. I think they still have it actually. Um, and so I'm mimicking that because every like this opens up into its own window. Same thing with my personal Asana, my uh, my business Asana account. They're all going to open up directly, you know, in their own separate window. So I don't have to manually like click through and click out of the account, click into this account and that kind of thing. I have instant input to any hat I'm wearing. If I'm wearing my church hat and something comes up, I'm just changing the workspace alt four or just using my mouse to blast through the workspaces and I'm putting that baby in there and I'm going right back to what I was doing. And so that's the idea is to have this like seamless, frictionless digital workflow to get her done and um, be highly efficient and effective at what I do. Um, why do I think this way? Why? I have no freaking idea. I don't ask questions why anymore. I just accept I'm a weirdo that way. And, um, and I do know for a fact that um, out of all these crazy experiments that I do, there's usually one or two really cool things I learned that stick for the rest of my life, and uh, it's like a game changer. So I don't know about you, but if you have an itching to experiment with different workflows, I know it could be kind of a headache to do experiment because you just want to get your work done, but sometimes it's worth experimenting because you just never know what's going to work until you try it out. So um, I hope this helps someone. I hope this kind of like, you know, um, gets people excited to try new things. And without the power of, of uh, Linux and, and open source technology, um, all the amazing developers who make this happen to give us to give us a freedom to even interact with our computers this way, um, we, it wouldn't be possible without them. So um, give to your favorite project and uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to experiment while you're at it and learn along the way and share with anyone who wants to share, uh, uh, learn about what's working for you. So go for it. Try it out. Experiment. Have fun. Uh, prophetic, I'm out of here. Have a great night. Talk to you guys later. Peace.